The 2022 NFL Draft is less than a month away. Yeah, it's coming up real close. And we're going to keep you guys covered on what the Steelers could and will end up doing. Before we get going on today's show, who are your favorite prospects in this year's draft? Could just be one name or a long list of them. Let me know who you're loving in this year's class right now in the comments section. You're watching Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey here with the latest going on around the Steelers. And we're going to begin with some news as Jannard Avery, the former Brown and Eagle, is taking his talents to Pittsburgh. He signed a one-year deal with the Steelers. And I really like this move by Pittsburgh. I thought Avery flashed in college. I liked him coming out. I thought he flashed at points with the Browns and the Eagles. To be what I assume will be the number three edge rusher, I think has a lot of value. Now, Avery has played some off-ball linebacker in the past. I don't think that's been the best use of his talents. I think he's better as an edge. Regardless, having that inside-outside flex does carry value. Obviously, we all love TJ Watt because how could you not? Avery is not going to start, I don't believe, for this team. And although we don't have the details on the contract beyond one-year deal... I would also not anticipate him, you know, being a highly paid player. But TJ Watt is edge one. Alex Highsmith, he of the breakout year last season, is ed now edge number two. Jannard Avery, I think, could handle that third edge rusher role. He did not produce at a high level last year in Philadelphia. He was kind of more of a, of a Sam, that strong side linebacker role, did not blitz that much. That's okay. I think he will be able to uh, bring more pressure this season could also line him up at off-ball linebacker and blitz him from the middle linebacker spot if you want to get creative with your packages there. So I assume it's going to be super cheap, maybe not even a guaranteed roster spot. I like this move a lot by Pittsburgh. I think Avery's a smart signing here at the tail end of the March portion of NFL free agency. So grade this for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Gennard Avery signing. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So while the ad plays, head down there and grade it for me. A, B, C, D, or F. And make sure your notifications are turned on. You're subscribed. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on our daily videos here at Steelers Talk. So while that ad plays, go comment and go subscribe right now. Let's look now towards the NFL Draft, which, as we mentioned, is just around the corner. There has been a trend in recent years for Pittsburgh. Defense go is the, off in the target. Now, this makes sense, right? You took Najee Harris 2021, and typically tight ends and running backs don't go that early. Receivers are good first-round picks, but Pittsburgh's had a long run of great receivers to good receivers, often drafted round two and round three. You didn't need a quarterback at any point. That leaves offensive linemen, which you've had a pretty good O-line up until the past couple of years. And, well, now it makes sense why you're taking linebackers. And two, one elite pick in T.J. Watt. I think Najee Harris is a great player, too. Devin Bush has been up and down. 2020, there's no pick because he traded it for Minka Fitzpatrick. Worth it. Terrell Edmonds, who we'll get to actually later on in the show. And then Artie Burns because you wanted William Jackson, but you got sniped. So the trend is the Steelers tend to go defense in the first round. Now, if that trend continues, there are some players who I think could make sense for this team, depending on who is on the board. Now, maybe you want to go all out and add an edge rusher. Maybe you don't want to pay Alex Highsmith long term. Steelers have a good broad view there. A Jermaine Johnson, George Crawford could fit that. If you don't love Devin Bush anymore, maybe you draft a Kobe Dean. If you're looking to replenish your interior defensive line, I do think Devontae Wyatt could be an under-the-radar pick. If you want to go corner, look, Sauce Gardner's not going to be there. I doubt Derek Stingley's there. Trent McDuffie could be a fit for you at corner. There are other guys as well. And, hey, maybe a surprise pick of safety if you really, really, really just want to end up replacing Terrell Evans with another first-round pick. But that would be three, quote-unquote, firsts at safety the past five years. That's a lot to throw in there for a typically less valued position. So what do you guys think? What position should the Steelers target in the first round? Maybe it's QB. Maybe it's left tackle. Maybe it's one of those defensive line spots or just defense spots. There's a lot of different routes Pittsburgh can go. I think they're a bit of a flex team this year, back end of round one. So let me know in the comments. What position should the Steelers target in the first round? 
Now, today's show is powered by BetUS. Get a 125% deposit bonus when you use promo code STEALERS125 at chatsports.com slash bet. There are a ton of NFL draft prop bets on there right now. First QB taken. Maybe Pittsburgh moves up for a QB like Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. But this is available when you go to chatsports.com slash bet and you use promo code STEALERS125. Let's talk Terrell Edmonds, currently a free agent for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Steelers have shown some semblance of interest in retaining Edmonds at the right price, which isn't a huge surprise there. Uh, for those of you who have been subscribed to Chat Sports for a long time, uh, I was shook by the Terrell Edmonds pick of round one. I did not like it. I did not understand it. I thought it was a huge reach. And I think, although he's been decent-ish, I think I was right in the end. Here's what Jerry Dulock said, one of the key Steelers. I think I pronounced that name right. One of the key Steelers beat writers out there. The Steelers would consider re-signing Edmonds, but only if he doesn't get a substantial offer in free agency. They are not going to chase him with contract offers. I don't think Edmonds is going to get a substantial offer in free agency. He's not a bad player, don't get me wrong there, but he's kind of like a starter-ish guy. He's not special by any of the imagination. So I could see Edmonds back to Pittsburgh on a one-year deal. I could also see Pittsburgh going, yeah, we want to try to upgrade. We're going to pass on Edmonds and looking elsewhere. So we've got some free agency and draft options at safety here. First up, the free agency side. Ronnie Harrison, the former Browns option. Deshaun Elliott, Ravens, Giants, Real Peppers. I, I think it was Mike Tomlin or maybe it was the GM. I can't remember which, which one said it. That they, Kevin Colbert wasn't looking for a, older players at, at safety. That, that's about the Honey Badger. They want guys coming off their first contract. Well, Harrison, Elliott, and Peppers all fit that mold. Uh, Peppers actually intrigues me the most of that group, even though he's also visiting the Patriots. Harrison offers some good split safety uh, value, and Elliott, when healthy, has been a good football player. Plus, you know him pretty well from his time with the Baltimore Ravens. I would keep an eye out for a draft pick, especially if they don't go up to get a QB. They've, uh, they brought in Jalen Petrie for a visit. That fits more of your box safety mold. Petrie, there were coverage concerns. I thought he was great at the combine, or at, at the Senior Bowl in that area. He will hit. He will tackle. He is a – I'll mention what Brian Broaddus, former Packers, Eagles, Cowboys exec, said. Comped him the Honey Badger himself. Now, that, that, that's asking a lot. You're not that guy, I don't think. But if you can get Honey Badger light second round, I have a treat. Daxton Hill, if you want a nickel, strong, free, do-it-all guy, probably got to take him round one, but I wouldn't be mad at it. Jaquan Brisker, I think, fits more of that strong safety mold. He – Missed a lot of tackles this year. His shoulder was really messed up. He was playing through it, so don't read too much into that side. And then Lewis Seen, I think, is more of a free safety option. He's got great range, great speed. So I'd look for Brisker and Petrie in the second round if one of those two guys are still on the board. So what do you guys think? Who will be the next starting safety opposite Minka Fitzpatrick? Could be a free agent guy. Could be a draft pick. Could be Edmonds once again. Let me know your prediction in the comments section.